Afternoon folks and welcome to a quick video overview of the Diana Brushless Soft Blaster. Got this from the good folks at Black Raisins who hooked me up. Um, very, very pleased with that. Been looking forward to this blaster coming out for a very long time because it sort of feels a niche for me. Um, wanted, I quite like brushless and I wanted a small list brush this pistol I can find for a while and this certainly fits the bill. Um, plastic is very very solid, very robust, um, no squeeze on it at all. I assume it's uh, nylon, it feels like nylon, it's certainly injection molded and the fit and finish of it is actually astonishing. Um, so when it comes in the box you get the blaster and you get two magazines and you get some darts and you also get this little 650 milliamp hour 4S battery pack which is, which is pretty nice. So the battery goes in the front here. Uh, let's whip this out. It's a tiny, tiny little M2 hex screw which is uh, probably going to get lost. I have to find some replacements for that. Now I've already charged the battery, so um, I'll be able to show it to you guys. But obviously when it arrives, it's going to be partially discharged, as is the convention with the brushless, uh, well, brushless LiPo batteries. So that's the battery in there. It's fairly snug in there actually, but um, it's pretty good. And like I said, the, the shell's really robust, so it's not gonna get knocked or bashed about in there at all. So when the battery is installed properly, you get a little green light in the front iron sight there. Um, I'm pretty sure that's actually an LED that's embedded into it. So even in the darkness, you can still see it, which is a nice little feature. It tells you that it's switched on and ready to go. Um, so you've got two switches to operate it. So you've got a switch on this side and a switch on this side. Now the switch on this side, you've got off in the back position here. And then in the middle, you have semi-auto. And then push it all the way forward. And you have full auto firing. The switch on the other side will pre-spin the motors. So when you switch it on, Listen very, very carefully. You can hear that the motors are already ticking over, which means whatever fire mode you put it in makes it much snappier. So if you're playing, there's absolutely no delay between the trigger pull. So if I put it into semi-auto like that and I have the motors pre-spun, and then if I turn it off, you see there's the tiniest little delay there when you pull the trigger. So it's a nice little feature that makes it makes it a bit snappier. So the blaster itself, it comes with two magazines. And these both hold 11 darts each. Um, and these are really, really nicely made as well. These are really strong. There's no creaking, no wobbliness to them. Um, they're very, very nice. So if I compare it to the Nightingale, which everybody knows and loves by now, you can see on top of it, it's just a touch smaller than the Nightingale. It's not as chunky um, as you would expect because the motors are smaller. But um, if I hold one over the top of the other, you can see it's just a little bit chunkier. Uh, the, the Nightingale is just a little bit chunkier. A lot lighter um, and yeah it's good I, I think I mean the Nightingale for me was absolutely perfect sidearm but I think this may just replaced it which isn't so bad um, one of the questions I was asked was about um, Nightingale magazines now the Diana pistol does accept Nightingale magazines they do fit and they do feed nicely the only problem is they do not retain because the, uh, the retention mechanism is slightly different on the Diana pistol. However, I have discovered, I haven't done it to any of mine yet, it's the little notch there in the magazine, if you cut 
a similar notch into the Nightingale magazine, it will work perfectly in the Diana and there's no feed issues with it at all. Um, so if you already have Nightingale magazines or you want that extra capacity, then that's really good. Um, I mean, obviously with 11, mag 11 darts in the mag, you're going to burn through that on full auto really quickly. So if you're thinking of running this as a primary, then Nightingale mags are a good call. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick firing demo for you folks. Um, it's raining at the moment, so I can't do a chronograph test outside at the moment, but I can just uh, fire off a few of these and then you can see what it's like. So I'll do a couple in semi-auto without the pre-spin and then a couple with the pre-spin so you can see the difference in snappiness. And then I'm just going to mag dump the second one with the pre-spin on. So this is semi-auto, no um, preheat on the motors. And they're actually just firing down the carriage and bouncing back at me, which is fairly spicy. So this is with semi-auto with pre-spin on. Nice. So now we're just going to keep the pre-spin on, semi -auto, uh, full auto, I'm just going to mag dump it. Nice. I'm going to do a cheeky little chronograph test for you now. Um, I can't use the big chronograph because it is raining outside. Thank you, British Summer. Um, so we're going to use the little Ace Tech one, which should it won't give us good values, but it will give us a good idea of what sort of speed this thing is shooting at. So I'm going for semi-auto with the pre-spin on. Let's see how we do. 151. 175. 144. 320, let's ignore that. 150. 173. 145. 148. 170. 147. So that's averaging about 150. Um, I'll do the maths properly and put it up on the screen. Um, but yeah, it's pretty impressive for such a tiny little pistol. So just for funsies, I thought I would put my 3S pack in this. Um, the idea is that if it's running a lower voltage, it will have less velocity and then I can use it at more games. So here we go. We've got pre-spin on, semi-auto, running off a 3S battery. Oh, it looks promising. So I've recorded the values for both the chronograph shoots. On 4S, um, we made 10 shots. One was 328, but we'll disregard that. So add them all up, divide by how many there are, which is 9, and you get average of 155.8 FPS, which ain't too bad. Um, on 3S, um, added them all up, divided by, by 10, the amount of shots we made came with 134.3, which is disappointingly high. I was hoping that I could use this at um, one, sub-130 games, but it doesn't look like I can. So I'm going to do a little bit of experimentation to see if I can make that happen. So the real question, I guess, is, is it worth the money? So it cost, I think they cost me £180 in total, um, which is roughly three times the amount. Of a nightingale is it worth that i think it probably is um especially for me because i obviously play nerf a lot and i've started to play with pistols exclusively more and more so i think it's possibly it's certainly going to fill the, the the hole in my loadout that that was currently filled by the nightingale um but i generally wanted something a little bit smaller which is why i've gone for this anyway um, performance is stellar um, from the Diana, um, as you would expect with the brushless system. The motors do get quite warm, especially if you're um, sustaining fire with them. So if this is your primary, motors are going to get quite warm. You've got a nice metal heat sink here, so hopefully the motors won't overheat. 
but it does it is even after just playing it with the the demo that i've showed you guys it is noticeably quite warm so um i think that's something to look out for especially if you're using it heavily um but apart from that really pleased with it super impressed with it and um if you get the opportunity to get one and you feel like it's going to be a valued part of your loadout then i suggest you get one as soon as you can um 